Okay, so that's all for STP overview. Now let's look at how does this spanning tree problem work to prevent this loop problems. Before that, we need to introduce some basic concepts. So the first basic concept is the bridge ID, BID. So every switch actually we call it a bridge. And for every switch, we will assign a bridge ID on it. And each bridge ID is composed of two parts. The first 16 bit, we call it the bridge priority. And the last 48 bit actually is the MAC address of the switch. And when the STP works, we need to select one root bridge or root switch among all the switches. So how to select this root bridge? We will following rules. First, we will look at the priority of this switch. If a switch with low priority value, then they have high priority, then they will be selected as the root bridge. And if the priority is the same, then we will look at the MAC address. The address with the last number will select it as the root bridge. And among a network, there are only one root bridge. And the spanning tree actually will be constructed based on the root. Okay. Now let's introduce another concept, which is the cost. Actually, each link will have a cost and there will be a root path cost. So the root path cost is defined as the cost of the path to the root. Okay. And the default cost of a part or of a link actually is related to the data rate of the link, the working mode, and also the STP calculation method. So here is the calculation method. We have three different uh, methods. According to each method, we can see the cost corresponding. The cost depends on the part rate and the part mode, whether it is half duplex, full duplex, or the aggregated link. Okay, and there are three different standards. So the when we know the link cost, actually we can calculate the root path cost. The root path cost for a part is the sum of the cost of all the inbounding paths. So here, the root path cost of this path actually equals to the 520,000. So this is the root path cost. Now we will introduce another basic concept, which is the part ID. Previously, we know that for each switch, we have an ID that is switch ID or bridge ID. Now we introduce for every part, we will introduce a part ID here. And part ID is also in composed of two parts. The first part is the priority part and the second part is the part number. So in the first part, actually the default number is 128. You can assign any other numbers to it by using the configuration command. Another basic concept is the BPDU, which is the bridge protocol data unit. The bridge data protocol data unit actually is the basis for spanning tree protocol to work normally. So this is a small message which is exchanged between switches. And within this BPDU, there are several important information included. Typically, there are two types of BPDU. One is the most popular one, which is the configuration BPDU. The configuration BPDU is used by the switches to construct the topology. And the other type, we call it the topology change notification BPDU. This kind of BPDU only be transmitted when the network topology is changed. This is the format of the configuration BPGUs. So in the configuration BPGU, we have the PID, PVI, which is always set to be zero. And we have the BPDU type to indicate whether it is configuration BPDU or the topology change BPDU. And we have flags. The flags tells whether it is the TCA message or the TC message, and then the root ID, the root bridge's ID, the 
root path cost, the bridge ID, and the port ID. These four are used to calculate the best port and the best path cost. And then several other domains which tells the uh, message age time and also the max age time and also the hello time and forwarding delay time. There are default time set for these times and we can also set other time for it. So why the configuration BPDU is very important? Because to run the STP, the most important thing is to calculate the spanning tree. And to calculate the spanning tree, we need to do three things. We need to elect the root bridge. We need to elect the root port and also the designated port. But how to elect these important things? Actually, we need to check this four domain to calculate. So we need first to find the smallest BID as the root bridge. We need to find the smallest path cost. We need to find the smallest bridge ID and port ID. Okay, so that's the format of configuration BPU. And how do we set the content of the BPTU? Actually, this is an example. So in this example, we will assume still for the topology as switch one is the root bridge. They transmit the BPTU to its neighbor, switch two, and switch two will transmit the configuration BPTU again to switch three. So in this packet, actually they will put the BID here and the port ID here and the, the root ID here. Here the root ID is equals to the BID because it is the switch one is the root and also the path cost. Because this is the root, so the path cost is initially zero. And then when this packet transmits to switch two, the switch two will update the content in these domains. So they will update the bridge ID and the PID as its own bridge and PID. And then update the path cost by adding the link cost uh, 20,000 here. So this is the packet transmit out. And so finally, when this packet is re received by switch three, it can calculate the whole root path cost.